Yeah, I've actually sold a tweet. <laughs> I sold a tweet. I, I sold one tweet for a hundred twenty dollars. It was actually pretty funny. I was like, when I got the bid, I was like, what is this? Okay, so he wants to own this tweet that I wrote. I guess I just accept this bid, right? I mean, like, wh what am I gonna do? Reject it? I mean, like, para din yun eh. So, yung $120 na yun actually converts to something like 0.2 uh, Ethereum, right? So, I was like, and now yung 0.2 Ethereum is pretty, pretty good money, right? So, since we're talking about um, traditional artists and digital artists and yeah. now NFT, but my question is, uh, we know that NFT is mo mostly digital, and so rel relatively speaking, digital art NFT. But, di ba po pwede din naman na, for example, a, a, physic, a, a traditional artist can sell his product through NFT by like backing up the NFT with the physical painting of his creation. Is that is that a correct thing to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and actually, so before this show, I was speaking at Art Fair Philippines, uh, and that was precisely one of the questions that I was explaining. So, um, Art Fair Philippines is the, the country's longest running uh, art uh, art fair, right? So, lots of artists and lots of galleries show up there. They sell their work. They put it up for auction. Um, and yeah, so the answer to your question is yes, for sure. And actually, the way that a lot of people are doing it now is, so they paint something, I mean, not like this, but let's say they painted this, right? Mm -hmm. they, what they'll do is they'll say, I'll create an NFT that you can buy that represents ownership in this. And then if you buy it, I will also mail this to your house. I'll send it to you wherever you are in the world. So kasama na siya dun sa cost of the of the token so a lot of people do that um it makes it feel both digital and tangible at the same time and lots of people enjoy that because now they have something like this that they can actually put on their wall so it's nice you can share it share it with your friends when they go to your house um and that's fine um so lots of people can do that you can even do things like what is sculpt sculptor so yung NFT is just a video of the sculpture, maybe of the statue that you made, diba? Parang maybe the video is just kind of showing the various sides of the statue. And when they buy that, sasama mo na rin yung physical uh, version of it. Uh, kasi sila na yung may are nung both the token and the statue. And that's fine. I think that that's a completely uh, a very vi viable way to, to do it. And this is for parang people who are not as um, are not as comfortable with the idea that the only thing they own is uh, a digital certificate. No, because basically that's what NFT art is. It's just a digital certificate representing a piece of work. Um, related okay. to that, Lewis. So since we're talking about digital representations, theoretically, I could have several digital editions of a piece of art correct mm -hmm. like uh, i mm -hmm. think you had that collaborative piece satoshi the creator where you had 222 yeah. editions yes now, yes yes does each edition have the same value or let's say could could edition 220 be more valuable than 222 and if so why I I can tell you that usually uh, collectors will put different values on uh, interesting numbers. So, Horare, the first edition is definitely going to be more valuable, right? Because it's the first eh. But it's not, we're not talking about massive differences. Ha? We're not talking about 10x more valuable than number two. We're thinking more like maybe 20% more valuable than number two. Uh, hindi siya, hindi ganong kalaki yung variance. Um, I will say also that supposedly the whole point is that all of the editions are the same uh, in relative value. But I think uh, hindi hindi rin ang ayari yun eh. Kasi like I, when I look at all of the people who are now reselling that piece, so the piece that you're talking about is called Satoshi the Creator. We were selling it at two thousand dollars per piece, and then we we managed to sell two hundred uh, uh, pieces of it. Um, when when I was looking at the resale value. The resale value was kind of all over the place. It was some some people were selling it at two thousand five hundred dollars. So konting kita lang, not a lot. It was just you know twenty five percent. 
and then some people who were selling it for seven thousand dollars. I mean, I can probably guess ko alin yung mabibili don. Probably the cheaper one, not the seven thousand dollar one. Um, but I think that uh, what it is, it's it's exactly like the crypto exchange market itself. Na you know people give different values to things, and then eventually the price converges to to the whatever the market currently believes it really is worth. No. So some people will say seven thousand dollars. Some say people will say five thousand. Some people will say two thousand, and eventually, mago converge yan to something, right? Whatever that is, yun yung magiging true price niya. Um, but uh, we were already paid from the first, um, the, from the from the first launch. So actually, technically, labas na yung artist dun, eh. It doesn't matter so much to us anymore how much people are reselling it for. Um, that's that's really up to them now. Right, but aren't there aren't there platforms which, let's say, whenever there's a resale, the original artist still gets a percentage? Yes, uh, most of them actually. So, uh, Maker's Place, Nifty Gateway, there's a ten percent royalty uh, mm-hmm. to the artist. Uh, so, I, I, yeah, you're you're correct. Na merong, there is a benefit, but like, there's very little that an art artist can do. To keep pushing the resale of his work, eh. that's mostly the ano na yun, eh. That's the second secondary market na yung bahala dun, eh. Right. Um, now obviously you can continue to try to promote it, um, pero yeah. So so but you're correct na merong royalty, which is very different from traditional art, ha? Like in the traditional art space, um, you know, once you sell that painting. You have no idea kung binenta na ulit nung collector na bumili from yeah. you originally. You you can't tell, right? And they're not gonna tell you, not really. So uh, so the fact that there is an automatic royalty in NFT art is just just such a uh, very empowering uh, for for artists because it means that you don't have to con- constantly just keep churning out new work in order to uh, make money. No, parang if you did. Something that was really good, and lots of people bought it. Lots of people are reselling it. Then you can continue to just make a little bit of residual income passively, just from that. So it's a it's a wonderful system. Um, but yeah, yun nga, it's uh, it's challenging to get into it right now. Yun lang. I, I guess I'll just say that it's very challenging to get into it right now because there are so many artists who are all trying to become NFT artists suddenly because of stories like people. Uh, or yeah. you know other stories, no? So naka ano siya, eh. naka excite siya. So everyone is trying it now, I guess. Uh, Luis, having having said that, na di ba artists right now are trying to get or dive down into the space where we're in, because they see people like uh, you guys earning from the work. Then there's there are also bad players, you know, no, na who will try to do like piracy or get get the art and learn from it now um what is the protection of artists like you from yeah, yeah. such i uh, know no from such bad yeah, actors because yeah. so, anyone uh, can yeah. simply since this is digital anyone can simply recopy your work for example your 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 artwork yeah. and then resell yeah. it and say, say that this is Luis Benaventura's yeah. work yeah yeah yeah, yeah no that's uh, no and that's true uh, so yeah but I, I should say na uh, no, that problem exists in the traditional art scene also because you can take photos of other people's work and kind of make a counterfeit no um, I guess it's just a little bit harder kung oil painting yun you actually have to be really good um, in the NFT art space uh, the, one of the things you have to remember is that technology doesn't solve everything so when it comes to things like uh, piracy, what you call piracy, yung kina counterfeit uh, or kina copia yung work of another artist and then they're selling it as if it was their own work. Um, I, I can tell you one story that actually happened to me because it um, actually did have someone steal some of my art and you know, post it in another marketplace and pretend that it, his, it was his work and they tried to sell it to people there. Now, um, within a few hours of his first posting, um, you know, I started to see uh, a Twitter's, uh, Twitter mentions about it. Na para, hey, this guy is pretending that his. Uh, uh, so my my name on Twitter is Hello Luis, H E L L O L U I S. So um, they were saying they're pretend. This guy is pretending to be you. Um, uh, I've just reported his work. 
to the to the marketplace. And then within a few hours, they were he was taken down and he was banned from the marketplace. Naman. So he wasn't able to get away with it and no one was able to buy uh, the, the work. So I think that uh, one of the answers to that is uh, some of it is social. Um, if people know you, the, the actual artist, um, they have a higher chance of recognizing your work and they can help you uh, sniff out yung mga counterfeit or the people who are trying to fake uh, fake your, your work somewhere else. So that's one. And then the other thing is that the marketplaces themselves, at least the more um, parang the more formal ones, they actually interview the artists before they allow them to sell in the marketplace. So they'll interview you, you'll actually have to talk about you know parang your background, you talk about what exhibits you've done by yourself, uh, or whatever, no? And what is what's your story as an artist? No, so they actually spend time getting to know you before you actually get approved. So that's a really big uh, filter. Also, it's hard to it's hard to parang be a counterfeit artist uh, because I don't know, you're not going to be able to stand up to a, a really good, a direct interview. No, so ayon, that's that's one of the other ways that you could uh, solve it, but. The technology itself can't do much about stuff like that. It, it, it can only uh, do one thing really well, which is it can prove that ownership has transferred from one person to another. And it usually that means like transfer yung ownership in this artwork from the creator, the artist, and it's moved to someone else and that person is usually the buyer. That's the only thing that technology can really do well. and. You know, based on that, it seems like it's doing quite well, right? Like, it seems like there's a lot of people that are very interested uh, in the space. It certainly seems like one of the more exciting parts of crypto right now. I have a, a hypothetical uh, follow-up question, Luis, about mm -hmm. that. Since the cryptocurrency blockchain is also involved in doing smart contracts, will mm -hmm. it be possible, what do you think it's possible, to put another layer of protection to your work? since it's digital design but there's also a, a, a smart contract on top of it na protecting it like before anyone can view access or see the work yeah. they have to you know fulfill some um obligation on the digital contract on top of yeah. the nft yeah. i i know it can uh, be costly i don't know i don't know really but it's an hype yeah. it's a hypothetical question um so I think that, uh, so firstly, when it comes to viewing the artwork, I think everyone should have the ability to view the artwork, whether or not they own it. I think, so, iba yung, ano eh, um, owning, owning the artwork is different from viewing the artwork. Uh, so, my favorite example here is that, you know, every year, not this year, but like years ago, um, there are about 100, and 100 million people that visit Paris to view the Mona Lisa. They look at the Mona Lisa, they take photos of the Mona Lisa, they take selfies beside the Mona Lisa. But just because they have photos of the Mona Lisa does not mean they own the Mona Lisa. So it's the same concept here. Um, my artwork, my NFTs, I try to show them to as many people as possible. I want as many people as possible to watch them, view them, enjoy them, share them. Uh, but only one person can own it. And, and yun yung pinagkaiba. I think so. Um, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say that ano lang, parang from a viewer standpoint, I want as many people as possible to be able to view it. Now, is it possible for more technology to be created on top so that mas ma, I don't know, maybe mas ma protect yung rights ng artist? Possibly, but I think that you would only be able to do that by also reducing the rights of the viewers. Um, maybe by making it harder for them to view something and I'm not a fan of that I would rather that the work can be enjoyed by as many people as possible and I'm willing to trade a little bit of difficulty uh, yung, yung nga, yung the things that I was talking about na meron, sometimes pineperata yung work mo I'm willing to trade that possibility for the fact that there are going to be more people who can enjoy my work and see it and, and, and maybe learn from it um, because I think that's more important. I, sh I it, with with things like the crypto industry, there's a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of good and bad things, right? 
I choose to focus on the positive outcomes more and try to push for positive outcomes rather than trying to prevent the negative outcomes. Because preventing the negative outcomes, it's, spent, it's so much of your time and energy. And all you're doing is preventing a few negative outcomes that may or, not, or, may, or may not actually happen. What you, I'd rather do is spend all of my time and energy pushing for the positive. Because that's how you grow, I think. Um, uh, obviously, that's just a personal theory, and that's kind of more. Parang ano na yun eh? Uh, life, life motto ko na yun eh. Focus on positive outcomes rather than ano, rather than on negative outcomes. But anyway, it's helped me survive seven years of being in the crypto industry. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Certainly a good philosophy, but perhaps one option for that, Louis, might be insurance. You already have insurance in the crypto space, so yeah. Um, perhaps having a smart contract ensure the ownership of the of the artwork so that if it is quote unquote pirated you can claim against the insurance uh, it doesn't I think that doesn't yeah, yeah. stop people from viewing it but at least it gives right. some sort of protection to the original owner yeah I think that uh, no, the DeFi space is definitely making some interesting uh, strides in insurance I, I'm not I confess I'm not familiar enough kasi with some of the projects there so I wouldn't be able to tell you how appropriate it is um, but theoretically, if someone is willing to underwrite the insurance of anything, then then you've got a deal that it works. Um, I, I just don't know kasi if anyone is actually actively doing that for NFT art. But I'm sure they're doing that for traditional art. Like the entire museum in Paris is insured, right? So obviously they're already they've figured out how to do that traditionally. Yung hindi ko nang yung kung siyang DeFi. Uh, equivalent right now. That part I'm not quite sure about yet. But let me get one more question. You got a second question. This is an interesting question. Though. This one came from Mark Caceres and he's asking if what are the pros and cons of owning NFT compared to an actual painting, music, etc. Right. Okay. Good so question. that's a very good question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So firstly, the first question you should ask yourself is do you even want to own a painting is that something that you've wanted to do um, typically kasi, and you know I mean I don't want to speak uh, too broadly here but typically owning art is something that people who are a little bit more wealthy tend to do you know? and the reason why they do that other than the fact that they want to support artists um, one of the reasons why they do that is because art is one of the few assets that you can buy that is uncorrelated to economy, to the, to the general economy that you're living in. So you could live in the Philippines, you could own, uh, I don't know, a Picasso. I mean, obviously that's impossible. You can't actually own a Picasso now, but if you could, the, the, the value of that Picasso continues to go up regardless of uh, how well the Philippine economy is doing. So there's a reason why wealthy people invest in art. Primarily, it's because it allows them to protect their wealth over time. That being said, we have that technology now. It's called Bitcoin. So you don't actually have to own art to protect your wealth over time. Just buy Bitcoin, right? So that's the simplest way to do it. And, you know, thankfully, uh, this is not a new technology. It's been around for 11 years. Now, so to answer the question of what is the pros and cons, well, the, one of the pros is that unlike that painting in your room, uh, when you uh, your NFT yeah, yeah. artwork is probably still going to be okay, right? Because it's digital. As long as it's not yung uh, I guess, your private key or whatever, like whatever it is that you store it on. And technically, it'll still be on the blockchain, so maybe you don't lose ownership of it ever. No? Um, so that's one. And the other thing is, um, you know, typically the problem when you are a collector of art, when you're a collector of traditional art, the problem is that you are limited by your ability to sell it. So let's say I bought the artwork of a, of a great painter, I got it at a great price, and like a couple of years from now, let's say it's 10 x yung value. Niya, no? So now, okay, great. So now it's worth, let's call it a million pesos, right? I bought it for 100,000, now it's worth a million. My problem is that I'm not, I don't think I can find anyone in La Union who's willing to pay 1 million pesos for this piece of artwork. So that makes it problematic for me because even though I know that this thing is worth 1 million pesos, it's actually quite hard for me to liquidate it. So it's a frozen asset that becomes, uh, you know, voila, it's just sitting there. It can't do anything. Uh, the thing about NFTs is that yung, yung secondary market, 
is technically global. So I don't need to have, I don't care if anyone in La Union is willing to pay 1 million pesos for this piece, right? Uh, I can find someone else globally who is willing to pay me, uh, what's the ether price now? I guess 5.2 ETH for this painting, right? For this NFT art. So yun yung advantage niya. Mas malaki yung market eh. Mas malaki yung market, you don't have to be in the same country. There's no shipping cost, there's no logistics. Baka masira pa yung painting, baka mawala pa. Uh, now there's no, no, none of those problems, right? Now it's just exactly what I was ex describing. It's a speculative investment in an asset that over time theoretically increases in value uncorrelated to the economy that you're living in. And that's kind of one of the main reasons why uh, people are getting into this stuff. I, I have a follow-up question, but it's quite funny because, well, but well, before I ask the question, because uh, from what I understand, when you buy the NFT, it it technically gives you mga artists the power, the platform, yeah. so that they can expand their their artwork. However, I noticed some people, even if they're not an artist, they create an NFT, they put it in the marketplace. They're just looking at the link in bio. Nila. I'm an NFT uh, artist, even on Twitter. But there are some who buy. There are some who buy. Even they're selling that at $40, $50. There are some So can you, can you really say, or can we really tell that even if I'm not, I'm not an artist, but I'm going to create an NFT, am I considered as an artist already? Um, so I'm a little bit more. I'm not very strict about my definitions of about who an artist is. I said that I'm gonna claim I'm 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 an yeah. NFT artist. I've created uh, yeah. my, my artwork and it's now in right. the in this marketplace, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's fine. Like I mean, look, just because I went to art school doesn't make me an artist either. I think that what matters, cause there is, are you consistent? Are you you know are are uh, are you building a a personal brand? And do people respect your work? No, and that's more important. Uh, you, whether or not you can sell an NFT, one or two NFTs. Eh, I mean, I maybe sure. I mean, like the thing is, I don't, I don't mind so much about the definitions. Like, dude, okay, fine, you can call yourself an NFT artist. Like that, that's okay. Um, I, I, I'm not sure how sustainable it actually is for you if you're not really, the, you know, creating anything. Bakal naka, bakal naka ka lang eh. Diba? So I think what's more important there is consistency. Um, how how long have you been doing this, and is your work consistently, uh, parang well received by by the audience? You know, you know, things like that. And I guess maybe even more importantly, are you contributing back to society by creating this artwork? I mean, I like what is what is your work actually doing? Is it making people happier? Is it making people inspired? I think that's important too. It's a little bit harder to answer that, obviously, because it's very relative, no? But I think that that's an important question you should ask yourself before you start throwing around young labels of, you know, artist or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, this is not the first session we, we, we've discussed about NFT. Actually, in my previous session, I mean, Camilo Fermi, like, and James, we talked about it. James, I know, create a tie story NFT natin, Fermi. It's like a marketplace thinking that someone will buy it, because eh, and dami namin nakikita, they're creating their own NFTs. And because of hype, parang almost the vast majority, they want to, to, to have their own NFT. Not because of the, you know, of that, uh, or, or because I have an NFT, but because I want to make money. So parang ang nangyari yeah. dito. Okay, I want to have my NFT because it's it's hype right now. Or sabihin natin, it's in demand. So I want I would like to, to put that in the marketplace so that it, I could make money. But the case is, hindi naman yun nangyari, di ba? Kasi... Hindi naman lahat binibili, right? Yes. Yeah. In fact, it's getting para harder ano, and harder yung, these days. Yeah, yeah. Para yung joke natin, coach, no, that this, for example, this broadcast, we can sell this as an NFT para sa mga fans ni Luis at ni Jonathan Tinoco. <laughs> well, I'll sell this as an NFT. Yeah, and yeah. There's, a, there's, there's a Twitter, or I tweet, I tweet, I forget the name of the person. He's Jack selling Dor his... Uh, Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey, exactly. Jack Dorsey, said, yeah, yeah. Diba, for I think that's uh, more than a million dollars. If yeah, it's 1.2. 1. 1. Yeah. I think it finally 1. got bought for 1.2. Yeah, yeah. And diba, also, this, this mean girl, yung, yung bata, yeah. na yung nasa background niya, yung nasa sunog. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, 500,000 dollars. 500,000, yeah, yeah. So, imagine that. Talaga na yung bata na yung coach. Talaga na. Talaga na siya. Oo, oo. 
Yeah, but I think, yeah. you know, what, what that simply shows you is, and I think Luis mentioned this earlier, the thing with art, art as a, as a broad asset class, it's very subjective. All four of us can look at the same piece of art. I might think it's not worth anything. Luis might be willing to pay $2,000 for it. James might be willing to pay $10,000 for it. Wow. So it's really a function of what's the value that you personally will yeah. give to that artwork. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it's very yeah. subjective. Yeah. I've actually sold a tweet. <laughs> also, right. I, I sold a tweet. I, I sold one tweet for $120. It was actually pretty funny. I was like, when I got the bid, I was like, what is this? Okay, so he wants to own this tweet that I wrote four years ago. Okay. I was like, I guess I just accept this bid, right? I mean, like, what am I gonna do? Reject it? I mean, like, para din yun eh. And at the time, <laughs> Ethereum was uh, less than... Ethereum was only $800 at the time. Uh -huh. So, yung $120 na yun actually converts to something like 0.2 uh, Ethereum, right? So, I was like, and now yung 0.2 medyo, Ethereum medyo is actually medyo pretty, medyo pretty, pretty good money, right? So, I was uh -huh. like, holy shit, yung tweet na yun na... Na nabenta ko. I'm not even sure if. Try ko, try ko ng ibenta tong video natin to ano to your fans. Tignan <laughs> natin, baka baka may bumili. Are you uh, able to tell to tell the viewers what was the tweet? Oh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The yeah. tweet was just ano, so I was talking about ano. Uh, so it was actually a tweet that contained one of the very first uh, crypto art that I'd ever published. Ah. That's all. So may ano may may historical something something yeah, yeah. for for the collector. Because so the collector binili niya kasi yung art na yon, and then binili niya yeah. din yung tweet where I first talked about it. So I was like, ah, okay, well. There you go. Makes sense. Actually, makes sense. if I, I mean, I guess it kind of oh. makes sense. It really depends, right? I mean, kung, if you're the kind of collector who just wants to com complete the mm -hmm. the package, then I guess so, no. Um, but you know, I I kind of wish that na he had just told me that he wanted to also own the tweet. I was like, fucking give it to him for free. <laughs> I, was like, I didn't even know. Wait, I don't think wait, it's worth wait. that much. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, whatever. You, uh, that's how it ended up. And then yung point something ETH na yon became enough to like a significant amount of money right now, no?